Hi all. Today we can discuss about Fraunhofer diffraction due to double slit. In the last video we have seen Fraunhofer diffraction at a single slit. We found various expression for path difference, phase difference, resultant intensity, conditions for center maximum, secondary maximum, minimum etc. Now we can consider two slits A, B and C. Let A be the width of each slit and B be the width of the opaque portion in between the slits. Then a plane wave front of wavelength lambda is incident normally to the plane of this uh, slits. Then according to Huygens principle, each point on this incident wave front act as a source of secondary wavelets. Then these wavelets which are moving along the same direction as that of the incident ray will focus at the center and it produces a center bright image. And all the wavelets which are diffracted at an angle theta get focused at another point Q. Here the diffraction pattern can be analyzed as the combination of diffraction and interference. Now where the diffraction happens and where the interference happens. Diffraction is due to each individual slit A, B and C, D. That theory we have seen in the last video. Interference is due to the superposition of wavelets coming from the two slits A, B and C, D at the point Q. Similar to what you have seen in the Young's double slit experiment. So here diffraction pattern has two parts. One is the diffraction pattern that is due to the secondary wavelets from each individual slit. And the second is the interference pattern that is due to the secondary wavelets from the two slits which are reaching at the point Q. Now we can separately analyze the diffraction and the interference pattern. The diffraction pattern is due to each individual slit. Then what is the path the difference? We have seen in the last video that the path difference at a single slit is d sin theta where d is the width of the slit. Here the width of the slit is a. So path difference due to diffraction pattern at a single slit is a sin theta. Next what is the path difference in the interference pattern due to two slits? Here we can consider the double slit for that let the uh, top point of the first slit and the top point of the second slit we are considering. Then what is the path difference between the wavelets coming from the point A and C? For that we are drawing a normal to here. Then this CN will be the path difference. To find the CN, we can consider the triangle ACN. Therefore, the small uh, the small angle here is theta. So uh, here the sine theta will be CN divided by this AC that is A plus B. So similar to what we have uh, done in the uh, single slit experiment, here we will get the path difference as delta is equal to A plus B sin theta. So the path difference in the diffraction pattern due to individual slit is A sin theta and path difference due to double slit is A plus B sin theta. So if we know the path difference we can find out the uh, condition for maximum and minimum. In the interference pattern the condition for maximum is this path difference must be an integral multiple of wavelength lambda and condition for minimum is this path difference must be an in odd multiple of lambda by 2. Now what's the condition for maxima and minima due to single slit diffraction that we have already seen that for maximum that is for secondary maximum the d sin theta here it is a sin theta is equal to 2m plus 1 lambda by 2 and for minimum the condition is a sin theta is equal to m lambda. The final diffraction pattern on the screen will be the resultant of this diffraction pattern due to single slit and the interference pattern due to double slit. So that resultant intensity will be the square of the resultant amplitude and it can be written as I is equal to 4a square sin square alpha by alpha square into cos square beta.
This a square sine square alpha by alpha square we have seen in the diffraction pattern due to single slit as the resultant intensity. Here there is an additional term 4 cos square beta. So this 4 cos square beta comes due to the interference effect due to the double slit. Now we can see how this equation comes. The intensity is the square of the amplitude. So the intensity at the point Q is the square of the total amplitude. So the total amplitude means that is the superposition of the amplitude of the diffraction due to each individual slit. So let this amplitude from the first slit we can represent by a vector R. And amplitude due to the second slit we can represent by a vector R in another direction. The resultant of these two vectors we can find out using the parallelogram theorem. The diagonal of the parallelogram will be the resultant of these two vectors and that we can represent as R dash. So if A and B are the sides of a parallelogram, the resultant uh, square will be A square plus B square plus 2AB cos angle between the two vectors. Here the angle between the two vectors is the phase difference of phi. Then what will be this r dash square that is equal to r square plus r square plus 2 r r cos phi that is 2 r square plus 2 r square cos phi. So we can take the 2 r square common that is 2 r square into 1 plus cos phi that is this 1 plus cos phi is 2 cos square phi by 2. So on multiplying with this we are getting 4 r square cos square phi by 2. It is equal to 4 r square cos square beta. Where beta equal to phi by 2. R square is the intensity due to diffraction at a single slit. That we have already seen that the intensity due to diffraction at a single slit is A square sin square alpha by alpha square. So the final intensity is 4 into R square that is A square sin square alpha by alpha square into cos square beta. Where beta is equal to 5 by 2 that is 1 by 2 into 5 is the phase difference. What is phase difference? Phase difference is 2 pi by lambda into path difference. What is path difference here? A plus B sin theta. So this uh, 2 and 2 will cancel. So the beta is equal to pi into A plus B sin theta divided by lambda. Alpha we already know from the single slit discussion that is pi B sin theta by lambda. D was the slit width. Here the slit width is a so pi a sin theta by lambda. So the final resultant intensity at the point Q is 4 a square sin square alpha by alpha square into cos square beta where alpha is equal to pi a sin theta by lambda beta is equal to pi into a plus b sin theta by lambda a is the slit width b is the width of the opaque portion. Here the a square sin square by alpha by alpha square is due to the diffraction due to each individual slit and cos square beta is due to the interference of the wavelets from the double slits. So this diagram you already know it is the diffraction pattern due to single slit. Then this is the interference pattern due to the overlapping of the goes from the two slits. So that is, it is the variation of cos square beta. Here it is the variation of sin square alpha by alpha square with the alpha. Now we can see the condition for maximum and minimum due to double slit diffraction. So the intensity expression is 4 a square sin square alpha by alpha square into cos square beta. Where alpha is pi a sin theta by lambda and beta is pi a plus b sin theta by lambda. So here this sin square alpha by alpha square that is due to the effect of the single slit that we have seen uh, already. Now what is the effect of this intensity on cos square beta? So for the intensity to be maximum, what should be the value of this cos square beta? Thus cos square beta also should be maximum. What is the maximum value of cos square beta? 1. For the intensity to be maximum, this cos square beta value must be maximum and maximum value of cos square beta is equal to 1. 
For that, beta must be 0 plus or minus pi plus or minus 2 pi etc. That is beta is equal to plus or minus m pi with a m is equal to 0, 1, 2 etc. Where beta is equal to pi into a plus b sin theta by lambda. That we can substitute here. So pi into a plus b sin theta by lambda is equal to plus or minus m pi. So pi and pi will cancel and we will get a plus b sin theta is equal to plus or minus m lambda. So this is the condition for maximum intensity in double slitter diffraction where m is equal to 0, 1 to etc. If m equal to 0, that corresponds to sin theta is equal to 0, then theta is equal to 0 will correspond to the center maximum. This center maximum is also known as 0th order principal maximum. Now we can consider the condition for minimum. For minimum intensity, this cos square beta value also must be minimum. So if cos square beta is equal to minimum that is equal to 0. Then beta value must be plus or minus 2m plus 1 pi by 2. That is cos pi by 2, cos 3 pi by 2, cos 5 pi by 2 etc. Uh, we are getting 0 values. That is beta is equal to plus or minus 2m plus 1 pi by 2. Now what is the value of beta pi into a plus b sin theta divided by lambda. That is equal to plus or minus 2 m plus 1 pi by 2. So here pi and pi will cancel and we will get the condition for minimum as a plus b sin theta is equal to plus or minus 2 m plus 1 lambda by 2 where m is equal to 0, 1, 2 etc. Then what will be the shape of the final intensity profile here? That will be the resultant of the intensity profile due to uh, single slit diffraction and intensity profile due to the double slits. So we will get the final intensity profile as. So this is the final intensity profile due to double slit diffraction. Here the red color shows the diffraction pattern due to single slit. And the blue color shows the interference pattern that is a variation of cos square beta. So that's all about the diffraction due to double slit.